Welcome to the Resilient Mindset Podcast, an exciting new podcast by Resilience Queen, Justine Martin. Justine is the owner and founder of the Resilient Mindset, a division of the Justine Martin Corporation. Justine draws on her years of experience and knowledge, consulting with clients to develop and sustain a positive mindset. Focused on igniting your passion, purpose and power, follow the Resilience Queen each week as she delves into the mind of her guests, exploring fascinating stories and inspiring journeys. Hello listeners, welcome back to the Resilience Mindset Podcast. Today I've got Karen McDermott, who is the founder of Serenity Press, MMH Press, KMD Books and Everything Publishing Academy. She is an award-winning entrepreneur, multi-genre author of over 40 books, mentor and a TEDx speaker. And as a proud mum of six, She's also an advanced law of attraction practitioner who teaches people how to attract everything they want in their lives and writes about her success principles as KP Weaver. Her annual retreats are sought after events with featured famous guests and often hosted in an Irish castle. Her motto is, where there is a will, there is a way. Her quote is, when time and circumstances align, magic happens. Karen is passionate about sharing her extensive knowledge and vibrant energy with others. She has a no-excuse policy. If she can do it, anyone can. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for having me, Justine, and hello to anyone who's listening or watching. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good to have you on Resilience Mindset today. Let's get into it. What does resilience mean to you? Oh, well, we all have to have it. It's one of those key components of life. Um, and I am raising six children. so I Oh, have no, to- I read that. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, one has flown the nest. He's 25, and I think I've done a good job on him. So I mm. give myself a slap in the back. We all need to have resilience in our toolkit when we're going through life. Okay. You know, as much as I focus on the positives of life, I also have those those times where life just hits you a big slap in the face, you know, and, yeah. and I've went through a dark period in my life. I've been through PTSD and that was because I, I, I was, it, it happened. I, I understand why it happened is because I didn't prioritize myself, didn't keep my soul cup full. So when something happened, I sunk, you know, and I sunk yeah. to the depths of PTSD and I was there for over a year. And I talk about that freely. So I um I, I suppose I'm very strong of character, but I also understand the 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 value of of softness and of being kind to yourself and things like that. So I think that's all in in, in resilience for me as well is the strength, but also the the kindness and the softness as well. Mm. That's right. I mean, we say some terrible things to ourselves. Yeah. We are our own worst critics. We are the we bully ourselves yeah. effectively. Yeah. You know, if you can't imagine saying that to another person, don't say it to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one of the things I've learned. I'm all about positivity. Sickeningly so for some people, but <laughs> I'm going to just hang out there because, you know, I've learned mm. to love myself. And yeah, by so. loving myself, I'm showing my girls to love themselves. I'm also putting my best self out there into the world and pouring into others. So I'm giving mm. in that. And um and and I do that unapologetically. It's so important um for me to do that because We can, I'm all about story. And so we live our lives and write our chapters, our next chapters by the stories we tell ourselves. So it's really Mm -hmm. important. And I'm very much about, I I write about metaphysics and everything and the energy we put out there is what we attract back. And I've achieved so much in my life because I've woke up to life and understanding how um, energy Mm -hmm. and how what, what we talk to ourselves about and, you know, Yes, if we have a bad day, allow ourselves to have that, but also um, allow whenever it's good to embrace that good and share that good and harness it in our Mm. lives. And feel that you're worthy of that good as well. We're all very worthy of it. (laughs) We are absolutely. That's right. Uh, But there's a lot of people that don't think that they are. Which is and very, it's so very sad, sad, but we can only do our best to have them realize that they are just mm. that's that's the right. Mm. So what what's a major adversity that you faced and uh, how did you draw on your own resilience to cope? 
Yeah, well, as I mentioned, I went through PTSD. So that was pretty, um, it was a pretty dark time. I remember having like tunnel vision and with PTSD comes a numbness. Now I'm a very alive, vibrant person <laughs> um, <laughs> in, in my life. And I was before I fell into PTSD, but it brought with it no, it whenever you're in, in that um you just don't feel things you're numb to life mm. so how are you supposed to attract amazing things energetically into your life if you're not emitting any energy so mm. I ended up coming out of PTSD with the wake-up call of a double miscarriage but one thing that that did was um it's in it made me feel again because I cried yeah. tears for those babies I lost I cried tears for the year I lost in PTSD I but I started to um, feel again and feel alive again and and I I came out of there with, out of that dark period I, I call it my cocoon period because yeah. I come out with just all this wisdom and no inhibitions like I just it's like I don't care what anybody says or <laughs> thinks I know that I'm going to achieve something magnificent in this lifetime for me but for others as well and I'm just going to be an inspired leader and see and go on an adventure in life and see what I can get out of this lifetime. And I've been on that crusade ever since. And anybody who wants to brilliant. come along for the ride is very welcome. <laughs> so you're like a beautiful, magical butterfly now. You're That's what I said. It's a cute. butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, it is that. Absolutely. And I love that analogy because yeah. when you wake up to that, and it is an awakening because before it, you're mm -hmm. asleep, you know, but when you wake up to the potential that life has to offer us all, because it's not just there for me. It's not just mm -hmm. there for other people who are, who, who, you know, who attract or who have all of these wonderful things in their life. It's there for everybody to have. You just that's need right. to learn to work with it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, for me, time, time is the most precious yes. commodity on the planet. You can't buy it, reuse it, sell mm -hmm. it or borrow it. So be really careful on, on who you spend it on and what you spend it on. The most, the most, yeah. I, the most wealthy thing in my life is apart from, you know, the wealth that I have in my, my family mm -hmm. and my kids, I just adore that. But the wealth I, is, is being the master of my own time. There's nothing mm -hmm. like it. And I know my dear, beautiful, gorgeous sister who worked in mental health for 22 years, um, you know, it, in a contract role has just stepped out into her own um, organization and she's the master of her own time she's able to manage and, and being a mother I think it's important you can still have mm -hmm. all the successes and all the ambitions but you can work the time around your family and then you're not compromising your values and that was for me personally and everybody has their own thing but for me that was a really huge thing for me to have that blend yeah no, that's, mm. that's fantastic uh, so who are your role models in resilience and how do they inspire you, Karen? Oh, I thought about this question for a, a long time. And <laughs> I, I'm just going to say that um, just what comes naturally to me is anyone who just stands up and gets through, you know, the crap that life has to throw at you <laughs> because we <laughs> all get it, you know. So anyone who stands mm -hmm. up and just keeps moving forward, especially when they don't feel that they can, because it's the moving forward that you need to do. Whenever you, like I could, I know lots of people who have sat a lifetime in PTSD. That is a lifetime. That's just so tragic for my heart to even mm -hmm. think about that, Justine. So I, I'm blessed that I came through it. I, I, I worked through it and I, I learned what I needed to in that period. But does it define my lifetime? No, absolutely not. But it actually, um, it I, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was a tough time. I didn't bloody like it either. <laughs> I did not like no. it. But I, I understand the value in it for my life mm. and where I am now and the, the foresights and the empathy and the insights that I have, you know. Mm. And and if, you know, I, I can see it in somebody's eyes whenever they have PTSD. And only I, I can see that because I've I've seen it in my own eyes, you know. And so, you've lived it. Yeah, you can see it and you can just see that the, the shaking, you know, it, you can just see it there. Um, mm. But then t for my story to maybe give someone else hope that if you just yes. keep moving forward, even if it's just one itty bitty step a day, mm -hmm. it's still moving forward and it's one step closer to coming through it. But always have the hope. Yeah. Never, um, you know, you always have to have hope otherwise, you know. So there's lots of people around, you know, that have come through and um, there's just so many I couldn't even name them. 
but also, yeah. you know, myself as well, you know, I'm really proud of what I've come through in life. And I, I always hit challenges, but I have this thing about challenges, Justine. I don't think of them as, um, a challenge? as negatives. I think of them as no, opportunities to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what a challenge yeah. is to me. It's, it's, a, it's an evolutionary process. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity to stop, pause and learn a skill or something because I, I'm ambitious. I set big goals <laughs> and big intentions. So I hit more challenges probably than most people. But that's because I have a lot I don't of, know, I might be on par with you there, Karen. <laughs> Just it, you are absolutely. And so if you see someone, you know, but once you approach it with a positive, yeah. uh, you know, approach with loving intention, because mm -hmm. I think that you come through things so much faster and get the best results when you put love into it. So that's what I well, always that's resilience. Do. It's that, absolutely, that's yeah. definitely resilience and, you know, not being bitter to uh, the outside world or, you know, or what's happened to you, you know, learning to accept it. It's like when I was diagnosed with MS, do I like that I have MS? No, no. I hate it. Like, have I accepted it? Yeah, I have, because this is what my life now is. And it's like, okay, well, you know, we don't give up, but we modify. Um, yeah, we adapt with what to we it. Face. Absolutely. Yeah, and then we adapt to it. That's right. And, yeah. um, you know, I thought I was in my dream job uh, back yes. in 2011, beginning of two. You know, I'd worked my whole career at that point to get to that job. And then there was nothing in my mind outside of that it's like i am where i am meant to be well the universe had other ideas yeah yeah, yeah. major ideas for me am i in my dream job now yeah but i'm open to more yeah i'm open to it now whereas i was a closed book back then. wasn't open to anything Oh, it's, um, isn't it amazing whenever you're on that flow though, Justine, it's just, yeah. you just know, you know, and mm -hmm. I say, I live my dream life, but you know what? It's somebody <laughs> else's nightmare. <laughs> <You know? laughs> for me, it's been, you know, it's, you're just knowing what it is for you and what you want. That's yeah. a really important thing yeah. in life is, yeah. is that, you know, and we all, especially motherhood, like motherhood mm -hmm. comes with challenges because mm -hmm. each of our children are going to go through things that they need support through. And it's hard to watch your child go through yeah. things. So you need to be resilient as a parent so that you can be that strength and be that support for them as well. That's really important. And as a grandparent, I'm a grandma. So. Oh, I want to be a grandma. <laughs> like, come on, give me some baby. <laughs> I've got six. Oh, I've got that's six grandkids. Yeah. So, you know, just to see the, the adversities that they face as yeah. young kids and, you know, them building their own resilience is absolutely beautiful. And, yeah. you know, nothing melts my heart more. Uh, two days ago, my three, oh, he's nearly three. Yeah. Uh, your old grandson um, came into the garage, into the studio, and there's, I've got a child gate there that keeps uh, my sausage dog in the studio. Yes. And I heard this, hello, my nanny. I'm like, oh, oh my ovaries. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's oh. it, isn't it? After my sixth, I was like, no, that's enough. I had been having kids for 19 years, apparently. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. How old is how old your youngest? My youngest is six. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah. That's, that's resilience there. The six children. Oh, well, our yeah. kids are here to challenge us. That's what they're there they for. Are. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. And that's, that's the thing. We learn as much from them as they do mm -hmm. from us. So. And when yeah. they get to 18, it still continues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a 25 year old. So he's. Yeah. I have a 29 year old and a 25 year old. Yeah. See? They're, see. they're still challenging. And then, and then bring in their, like, their spouses. Yes. Their children. Oh, okay. Multiply, see? I think I've turned right. my twenty five year old off having kids for a while. <laughs> So there you go. He's got enough he she. He he He's got enough brothers and sisters at the he moment does. to not worry about that. Um so Karen, what are your passions in life? Well, it's funny because I really fell into my purpose and my passion for writing and sharing stories when I was 31. So before then, and I just moved to Australia. So before then, I really 
was just experiencing life. I was very curious. I just captured the essence of life and just ran with it and just loved it. And then obviously I went through the dark period and then I fa- mm. fell into writing and the, th- the therapy and the expression. And I wrote my first novel in 2010 and it was published. It ended up being a catalyst into publishing. And I made a sacred promise to myself after that because I, I, I ended up falling into publishing. I was like, well, it, I will have stories get told because there's so much power in a story. It can heal someone. It can ignite mm. something within them. It can even, you put your child in your lap and read them, uh, a, you know, a picture book. That's connection. Yeah. So stories are really important. And being Irish, you know, we are all about stories. You know, if somebody's going through a hardship, you come around, you make a cup of tea and you tell a story. Yeah. Tell <laughs> stories. So stories are always a big part of, of life, you know, and so I really yeah. value it. So whether it's in a book or in, you know, but books create conversations and that's why I'm very passionate about them. And so I'm an accidental publisher that way, but I'm also an author first. So I'm an author of over 40 books of my own. I've, I wrote novels that's first. That's phenomenal. That, that, yeah, is, that it in itself. Lots, you know, but it's just a natural it is progression. Lots. It was a natural progression and there's, you know, there's, there's, novels there's novelettes there's children's books there's and then there's the 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 series i write you know on metaphysics and philosophy Mm. and stuff like that but it's just because everybody asks me how do you do what you do how do you always seem so happy and joy and i was like i prioritize joy very highly you know it's very important and when you prioritize joy you will always be successful you know i don't have the energy to be negative yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have time for that. Why sweat it? No, but just even the energy, the energy it takes to be negative yeah. would wipe me t- totally out. Yeah. The energy to be in a positive mindset mm-hmm. um, and the euphoria that goes with yeah. that spurs you on to the next thing. And you can't have a positive and a negative thought at the same time. It's scientifically impossible. So mm-hmm. you can only, only choose one or the other. So I know what I choose. You yeah, know, positivity. Yes, yes. Yes, same, same, most definitely. And that's not, that's um, not got to say that there's days where I just need to be in a duvet, watch Netflix or yeah. or just go for walks along the beach because we all get that. But just knowing and mm. identifying that before you hit a burnout or before you, you know, we just knowing mm. whenever it's time for you to do that and that it's okay yeah. to do that and everything will wait. Yeah, well, that comes on to self-care. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the pandemic has, has, you know, brought out a few good things in, in showing, you know, society that we haven't done enough self-care. Yes. And self-care can be as simple as having a hobby. I mean, how many people got stuck at home and all they had was a TV to watch because they yeah. hadn't taken care of themselves. Yeah. And art supplies went through the roof, the sales yeah. went through the Book roof. sales. Book sales, yeah, yeah, all of that. And that all comes under self-care. And so many people decided to tick that box of writing their book. You know, it's so wonderful to see that happening yeah. and all of these, because only you can write your book. Nobody else has your perspective. It's like a fingerprint. Right. You know, I, I've heard people talk about, you know, oh, well, somebody else wrote, I said, but you didn't write it. Only you can write it. And only your, and your, your audience wants you. And you'd never be happy if someone else wrote it. Mm. Well, that's it. You'd never be and happy. quite often people write the book they wish they wanted to read. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so it's like, yeah, go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. Well, I'm writing my memoir, as we you were are, saying absolutely. before. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 1999, I'm up to. And every year it's getting uh, longer. Each chapter is becoming longer because what I What a year 1999 more. was, like coming into the millennium, mm. getting ready. Do you remember that energy around? Oh, yeah, and the world was going to end. Oh, yes. <laughs> remember? Why? Why? What was it called? The Y2K or something? Oh, like that. that's right. Goodness yeah. me. How did you bring in... New Year's Eve in 1999. I was with my family in my mother's house. I I was a single mom at the time to my son who he was born in 1996. So he was four at the time. So, and then we had a a get together in my mother's house. And then I went out with my sisters and ultra nightclub. (laughs) Well, I was at a, I owned a women's clothing store. And oh. I sold all the tickets to a BNS ball, so I got oh. free tickets. And I was actually married, yeah. um, 
And my husband at the time was doing security for the ball oh. and I got free tickets. So I got blind. Oh, you know, you work them, it, I, work it I got it. drunk because the world was ending. Um, and, yeah, that's how I brought in oh, uh, 2000. Um, but, you know, I was a size 26 back then. So Are you kidding me, Just No, so... So if you're listening to this, I'm now around about a size 10, 12. Yes. Um, so that was a big adversity, but that's another podcast yeah. in itself. I'll talk about my weight loss journey one day. And Do, I lost 46 it's so important, kilos. you know. Yeah. And even there's so many components of that other than just the physical mm. loss of weight. You know, that there's so many other things that happen mm. around that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was my push into the outside world with the trauma that I'd faced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, when I dealt with the trauma, um, it made it easier for yeah. the weight to come off as well. Yeah. So, but that's that's been a journey. But I ended up in my my dream job um, that I went into. So I was a Weight Watchers leader for nearly ten years across Australia, so New South Wales yep. and then WA. I used to live in Perth. Wow. Well, never knew that. And um I ended up as a program director uh mm -hmm. for Jenny Craig and yes. uh I I'd only been there four months when my world crashed and yeah. I was told I'd never work again because that was someone else's false belief. It wasn't mine. Yes. So, yes. Um, and isn't it amazing like when people, you know, tell you things? So I get told all the time, uh, when we were talking about this, yeah. so, you know, I'm writing a couple of different books or uh, at the same time and, you know, I run four businesses and it's like, well, you're not going to be able to do that. No, no, but whose who's opinion is that? You know, we yeah, are doing that's it. That's their false yeah, belief. Yeah, that's, that's their doing choice. doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm successful in it. My brain works that way, just yes. your brain doesn't work that way. It doesn't yes. mean your brain. That's yes, I, I'm writing the beauty in belief and how people's beliefs and when they believe what others tell them, they take it on board when it doesn't, it mm. isn't actually the truth. The truth is what yeah. you believe because anything is possible. What if you can that's think not. it in your mind, you can make it happen. You know, that's the, yeah, you know? most definitely. Yeah. And like your the law of attraction that, mm. um, you teach people and yeah all of the universal laws like all of it i'm i was actually doing a load of videos this morning about it because i've been asked to by a, a business thing to talk about yeah. all the different laws and there's 11 of them so you're talking about the, the thinking and the supply and the compensation and the success and i know even a law of obedience like and i am just mm -hmm. so not an obedient person <laughs> But how, you know. I wasn't as a child. Either. I can tell you, my, I don't know how many wooden spoons my mum broke in the house. <laughs> I, don't fo I don't follow the conventional way of doing things, but it's a different type of obedience because it pays to work with the laws, universal yes. laws, rather than against them. So yes. that's the kind it's talking about. So it's, it's just yes. interesting because it does challenge your own perception of things, mm -hmm. you know, but it's mm -hmm. really beneficial to take the time just to learn and to work with them it's just so powerful yeah. I totally agree mm -hmm. I totally agree so um i've got a couple of uh nifty questions now that you don't know about <laughs> pineapple on pizza yes or no i love pineapple on pizza yes <laughs> i'm running a telly here we've had one guest that said no oh I love um, it. they won't be invited to my isn't it amazing party. how different it tastes on pizza it's just so right yes on. yes oh yeah my what's your favorite pizza for me i love a vegerama see i like an aussie with pineapple and garlic oh. and chili yeah mm. they should put pineapple on the vegeramas <laughs> Oh, you're gonna add it next. Hey, I, uh, that's, that's that's it. That's the next one. <laughs> yeah. Um, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, or wine? Okay, so I used to always be a tea girl. Then mm -hmm. I start, had had six children, so I became a coffee girl. <laughs> And now that I, I was, I was either pregnant or breastfeeding for a full 11 years of my life. So there was no oh, wine gosh. in my life, but now I can have a, a nice, um, rosé and I all love right. my rosé wine. So all Maybe three, function. all of the above. <laughs> Maybe at a function one day, you and I will have a glass of wine. Together. Absolutely. I have to, um, that comes with a warning though. <laughs> there does be dancing on tables after. <laughs> Have you not seen my live streams on Facebook, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got COVID, going to the pub, dancing. 
<laughs> uh, may have had a couple of red wines. Oh. Uh, okay, so favourite music. Oh, my goodness. It depends what mood I'm in. You should see, and I can share with you my Spotify playlist. There's mm. a bit of everything, but I do love Roxette. Um, yep. I do. You know, oh, you're an 80s chick as well. I like, I love my 80s music. I love Roxette. Um, I love oh, The Weeknd. Is it, you know, that Blinding Light song? I'm a bit yeah. of a dance. Um, yeah, so I like, um, oh, there's so, I just like everything. Um, music wise because I should ask what music don't you like yeah 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 um mine would be rap stuff. yeah yeah I'm, I'm not an Eminem fan or anything like no. that I, I like depends what mood I'm in I listen to a lot mm. of different things and Dido I like Dido for some reason yeah. oh do you yeah. I don't mind them. yeah yeah your favorite food oh there's so many <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love food. I ha I'm really mm. have to be honest. I love food. What is my favorite? Me food? too. That's how I got to be a size twenty six. Mm. Well, obviously, chocolate is a staple in my life. So you know, oh, I love that? my I'm chocolate. I'm so jealous. Um, but what I, I it depends again what what mood I'm in. I I don't stop myself from eating anything. I do love it, and it depends on the heat. Like we've been so hot here for months in Perth. It's only mm. starting to. You know, we're only starting to be able to breathe again. <laughs> so we've been doing lots of, you know, salads and barbecues and stuff. Mm. There's nothing like a good turkey dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a good roast. <laughs> yeah, so whenever I go home to Ireland, that's the first thing my mum does is the, <laughs> all the trimmings, everything, and there's never a bit left. Mm. And whenever I used to come, you know, when, when I was in my teenage years or even in my 20s and I used to go to my mum almost on Sunday dinner. So I'd pop into her house and if we were out in a night out, I would have the the bread with butter, you know, real Irish butter and yes. ca fried cabbage on it and eat cabbage sandwiches. Like, like what? Oh my gosh. I don't know what it is about that combination, lots of salt on it. It just hit the spot. <laughs> my mine was my uh, ex mother in law. Every Sunday used to make a roast, yeah, in dripping. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we'd get the fresh white bread and go in at the dripping, and it's like, oh, this is yeah. so cool. It's so fulfilling. Weight I was putting on, but it's so fulfilling. But your hips, like you know, that's the thing. I know. Yeah. I just have to look at food, and there's a thousand. Yeah, I, I do love food. I have to admit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so loo paper, forwards or backwards? Oh, I have six children. Just I'm glad there is loo paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually when somebody got me some toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that answer honest. yet, so that's the best answer so far. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, now we're sharing a project together uh, at the moment. Karen, do you want to tell the uh, audience what that is? Oh, absolutely. My heart buzzes and I'm in the energy of it today and, and have been mm. all week and will be on next week, which is Courage and yeah. Confidence. It's just, it's a book that's been brought out, a collaborative book through the Women Changing the World Press, which is a division of KMD books that I own. So the beautiful Peace and Katie from the Women's Business School have set up their own press and I'm guiding them to, to build it up and put out. But they bring amazing people into books it's just like the energy that comes out of the books that, that mm. these women, ha the vision that they have for their books is phenomenal. It's such a powerful book. So I cannot wait for everyone to hold it in their hands. Peace and Katie have theirs. I don't even have mine yet. <laughs> we're, <laughs> supposed to get, we're supposed to get it next week. So I can't No, wait they've, they've all left. I got all of the should be <gasps> notifications and they're all being expressed. So they should be with everyone on Monday. So Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait. Can't yeah, wait. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's what twenty five of us in that book. Twenty four, I believe. Twenty four, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I get to be in all of the books. I'm so lucky. And no. <laughs> I am now. I think this is my twenty first anthology that I've been part wow. of, and that isn't part of my forty. That's not part of the forty. <laughs> so yeah, and so my my objective at some point is because I'm in so many anthologies, and a lot of them are business. So I'm going to pull them all into a book. Um, yep. of their own and you know and then just promote mm -hmm. every book in it so yeah that's awesome well i'm in three at the moment there you are just keep doing it keep writing blogs yeah. and stuff that's mm -hmm. what people don't realize is when you write a blog it's not just a blog out there lost you can i actually myself mm -hmm. for heart notes which was um uh, a book 
I used to write for a website. I put all of the articles into a book, had it edited, and and its heart notes, and it's done really well, you know. Oh, so, uh, you know, because people go to your blog, they don't want to just keep scrolling, just go and read. They'll go at the one that would grab your book and just have it all in one space as well. So, that's why not? I've got some blogs out there on internet dating. So, oh, I've never been there and done that. That's Lucky. interesting. I did watch the Tinder Swindler though. Ah, uh, yes, I've, I've actually met a couple of men like that. Yeah, which is yeah. really scary. But, yeah, there's some very strange people yeah, on the yeah. internet dating. Yeah, you very... can see this face is never going there. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. But interesting, <laughs> like, interesting. Wow. And scary. Uh, so, Karen, how can people contact you? I hang out mostly on Facebook and LinkedIn, would you believe? That's where I mm-hmm. am kind of hanging out the most. Um, you just find me there and messenger or go to kmdbooks.com serenitypress.org or mmhpress.com and we'll put the links in the bio so anyone that is looking to have a book published or uh is looking to manifest some positivity in their life they can contact you i have a free group on facebook called life magic with kp weaver because that's what I write under. So yeah. come and join me in there. We've got a big project happening this year called Project Manifest, where we're bringing 10 people on a journey to manifest a personal and professional um, intention. I think I'll join that. We, as, it's going to be epic. And then at the end, we've got mm-hmm. a documentary. So we've got a cast and oh, crew and everything happening. So it's a bit, big, big, big one. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll put the link in the in the bio for that uh, yeah. Facebook group as well. Um, so, yes, well, do. Karen, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank you so much for having me, Justine. As always, a joy to connect. You're welcome. So remember, listeners, stay resilient. We hope you enjoyed the Resilience Mindset Podcast. Remember to subscribe to the podcast to get your weekly fix listening to Resilience Queen, Justine Martin. Follow Justine on social media at Resilience Mindset or log on to justinemartin.com.au. And until next time, remember, life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient.